You open up Photoshop and your first thought is, what is going on? I don't understand. Everything looks so overwhelming and you don't know where to start. Don't worry, I'll teach you everything you need to know to get started the right way. Let's open up Photoshop. The first thing you see is the home window. Here you can see recent projects you worked on in a list or if you click the tile icon, you can see these beautiful tiles. Now, if you go to the top banner, you see this little present icon. If you click it, you can find out all the new features of your currently installed Photoshop version. If you go in search mode, you will be able to find old projects projects by typing in a file name. You can even use it to find templates from Adobe Stock, which is super awesome. On the left, you'll find deleted files, Lightroom photos, stuff someone else shared with you, and of course, your own files. We're gonna skip the learn part, because come on, you're watching Photoshop basics. Now on top, you can open up a file or simply create a new one. You can also do this by going to file and then new. Now this opens up the new document window, which is crucial for you to understand. These settings determine the quality of your project. So the tabs on on top are like categories. Inside these tabs you'll find presets that you can use to work on. Let's say we're making a YouTube thumbnail. Well, YouTube recommends that you use a 720p resolution image. This will be 1280 by 720. So we need to find a preset that uses these dimensions. To find it, go to film and video. Then you can already see a 720p preset on top. Now let's move on to the preset panel on the right and see what we can do. First of all, let's call this preset YouTube thumbnail. The width and height are the dimensions of your project. They are already fine because we chose the 720p project. If you're working with photos, letters or cards, you can always change it from pixels to one of the other measurements. The orientation of your project can be changed to portrait or landscape. What this does is basically just switching the height and width. By enabling artboards, you will be able to create multiple artboards inside your project. The resolution is basically the pixels per inch or per centimeter. When you're making a thumbnail from this preset, there's no need to change this. Screens have a much lower pixel density density than, for example, a print. When you're making something that's gonna be printed, you want this number to be higher. The RGB color mode stands for red, green, and blue. This is a standard color mode that's used on websites, social media, or digital art. Basically, any color will be created by mixing those three colors. If you wanna make a thumbnail for YouTube, this is the go-to color mode. However, if you use RGB to print something, the colors on your print will look different than the colors from your screen. That's why when you're printing something, you need to choose the CMYK color mode. This stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and key, or black. That way you see the colors the same way on your screen as on a print. Grayscale only uses black, white, and both tints combined. This can be used for both digital and prints. Then we have bitmap. This can also be used for black and white prints. But this one uses ink dots, which will result in a much higher quality print. This is commonly used for printing super thin lines. So if we're creating a thumbnail, we're gonna choose RGB. And that brings us to the bits. 8-bit is perfectly fine for creating thumbnails, or other web pictures. By increasing this to 16-bit RGB, it will provide you with a much wider color range, which means that transitions between colors will be much smoother, especially in gradients. 32-bit RGB is typically used for HDR images. This will show you the biggest range of colors and a broader range of brightness levels as well. And this will result in much more detail in the highlights and the shadows. Now, the background content, you can, of course, choose a background color. However, I like this to be transparent. The color profile is set to don't color manage because we simply don't need it. But depending on what you're working on, you can choose a fitting color profile. This will make sure that there's no color difference between Photoshop and the final result. Now to save your preset, click the save button on the top right. Give it a name, which in my case will be YouTube thumbnails. Once you click the save button, your preset will be inside the save tab. Now to create this workspace, simply click on create. This will open up your workspace with your canvas. And now it's time to customize and optimize this workspace to your liking. So to continue the lesson click the video on my left thank you guys so much for watching and as always stay creative